Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming back. It's Hi, good everyone. to see you. Um, I'm Marianne. Greg goes next. I'm Greg. Hi. Good to meet everybody. And then Ruthie. And I'm Ruthie. Sorry, I'm very seniority person. I was a United Auto Workers employee <laughs> um, member for back back in the day. So, um, and so today, Ruthie is this is Ruthie's show. She's going to talk to us the the week before we feast. She's going to talk to us on feasting on effective prospect management techniques. Yeah. So. Um, as with all of our water coolers, they're fairly informal. I do have some slides, not lots of slides, and I do have some things to talk about. I'm not going to go on forever and ever, um, but audience participation, whether it's in the chat or whether you want to come off mute and talk, always welcome. Um, and we can go down a rabbit hole or two or seven if we need to. That's all good. So just because I have the slides prepared doesn't mean we have to totally stick to all of that. So just bear that in mind because you may have things you want to talk about and we're here for you as a collective group you know both us at stop hell and then the, everyone else on the call like we are we are the brain trust that can help you with some issues if you need work-related issues yeah. but that being said um so the holiday season like it or not is upon us and whether you celebrate holidays or not this time of year it could be pretty busy as we come to the close of the calendar year. Um, the last few weeks of the year are peppered with all sorts of celebrations and get togethers and holidays and lots of food, lots of food. Um, so how do we manage our work and our prospects during this busy holiday ridden time of year? And some of the first things, and I didn't mean to scare everyone by like there's only seven weeks, 47 days left in the year, but it's true. Um, the first thing we wanna do is reflect on our annual goals. Right. Um, what are you hoping to accomplish for your calendar year? And then thinking about maybe what part of the fiscal year you're in. For some of us, this is the end of our fiscal year. We do align them with the end of the calendar. Some folks, um, other folks, if you had a age live first start, you're halfway there. Oh, scary, I know. Um, <laughs> but thinking about where you are within that, um, within your fiscal year, within your calendar, year, what were your goals and what were you hoping to have accomplished by this point in time? Um, for some of our folks on the call who might be frontline fundraisers, you might be thinking of fundraising goals, specifically dollar amounts, right? Um, or number of visits that you had intended to get done by the end of the calendar year, or maybe a certain number of prospects you were hoping to qualify. For those of us who are more in the prospect development side of the house, the prospect research, prospect management folks, um, we might have had, and maybe not, not everyone has these metrics about how many prospects profiles we needed to get done by a certain date or how many new prospects we should have identified for our frontline fundraisers and then we have other projects like are we on track with the projects are we you know did, did we create a plan for our projects and it got blown out of the water because something else came along so how do we get on track and, and, and achieve our goals and then for folks in the, in the call who might be more donor relations side of the house which prospects should we be engaging with um, are there certain pockets, segments of prospects that you wanted to be engaging with. And of course, are some of our prospects volunteers and we do some volunteer outreach during the holiday time. So given where you are with your goals, what can you achieve in the next just under seven weeks to make sure that you stay on track, hit your milestones, and hit your goals? Oh, scary. So in relation to the prospects, what the things that we need to be thinking about, um, what and who do you need to be focusing on over the next few weeks? So if you're a frontline fundraising person, who do you need to be working on cultivating so that they're ready for that ask in the spring? Who do you need to be solicitating because you're hoping to get the ask completed by the end of the calendar year? Who is now in stewardship because they've made their ask? You know, are there gifts that we need to close for the year and asks that we need to do, or is there something else that we were hoping to accomplish? What are the things we really need to squeeze into these next seven weeks? Um, if we're thinking from the prospect development side of the house, uh, we might need to be focused on things like event briefings or getting some more research profiles done. Maybe we have an event coming up or we have new leadership coming in and they need to know who our top folks are. So we need to finish those profiles for them. And then just our basic day-to-day -day supporting the frontline fundraisers as they you know, create their plan for what they need to accomplish for the end of the fiscal year, calendar year, sorry. 
and then donor relationships, um, donor engagement folks, you know, what kind of stewardship outreach should we be doing at this time of year? Where should our focus be? Is it on stewardship outreach? Should we be focusing on very specific groups of people? Should we be focusing on things like, you know, end of year, more of, more on the networking and community building side of the house? So these are all things to be taking into consideration. And you'll notice I just put a lot of pictures of food in here. <laughs> So, and I know for some of us, if, um, I'm on East Coast time, it's prime lunch time. So I'm sorry if you're getting hungry, but feel free to go off camera and, and have a snack. Um, so during the holiday season, oh, someone says glad I ate lunch before this. <laughs> I did not. So all these pictures are making me very Definitely hungry. wise, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely smartest woman in the room right now. <laughs> so, who should we be contacting? Who are our highest priority people that we need to be in touch with, our highest priority prospects? And we often think like, oh, these are our VIPs, quote unquote, or our top tier people. And, and yes, yes, we should be thinking of our VIPs, whatever the heck that means to your organization or our top tier, whatever that means to your organization. But that's not a, a very donor centric way of thinking of the world. That's a very us centric way. It bases, you know, that model bases around our actions and what we need as an organization, what we're trying to manifest. But these are people, I mean, some of our prospects are organizations, but most of them are people. So we want to think, especially at the holiday time, what is the better approach? Maybe we start taking cues from our constituents and think about who would appreciate this outreach from us at this busy time of year near the calendar end. And this might look a little different than our list of VIPs or our top tier people. So this might be reaching out, you know, and it depends on your size of organization and how your constituency is comprised, right? But depending on what kind of outreach you do, you might want to look at people who have, if you have birth dates, birthdays between November and January. I know some folks, because of the holiday season, their birthday really gets lost in the shuffle. So maybe just a little birthday outreach to remember them is meaningful to them. It's very them-centric, not so much us-centric. It has nothing to do with fundraising, but these are remembered by them. Um, looking, you know, we can mine through our data and see who typically makes gifts at this time of year between the November and the January time. Who are those people? And are they consistently making gifts more often than not at that year-end time? So maybe we recognize them. We reach out to them. You know, we we shoot them an email, give them a call, whatever is their form of communication. But we recognize, like, hey, we you know we recognize that you're doing this every year. That's fabulous. Thank you. Um, other things we might want to do is just reach out to folks who've been generous to us this past calendar year. Now they don't care about our fiscal year, right? Like most people, as people, are focused on the tax year. So the calendar year matters to them. So they're looking at what gift they made in the last tax year. So recognize that about them and ignore your fiscal year in the moment and just reach out to them and say, you know, you've been very generous to this last calendar year and, and recognize them and, you know, tell them how much you appreciate their gift or the power that their gift had in doing things, accomplishing things, helping programming that you have. You know, they might want to hear something like that. Other groups of our prospects who sometimes get ignored, especially at the holiday season, are the people who are widowed and or elders. Um, and sometimes both, right? You can be widowed and an elder. But those are groups that might appreciate some outreach at this time of year. You know, if, you, if you're widowed or you're elderly, sometimes people just don't know how to communicate with you. You don't have as much family around. So they appreciate someone reaching out and giving a, you know, talking with them. Um, other groups to talk, think about new members of your constituency. Who are your new prospects? Who are folks who have sort of raised their hand, identified, made a nice gift, and they're new? Especially if you are more community-based or local-based, this is a very welcoming thing for them. It feels good for them, and it's a nice engagement point for you. But it doesn't necessarily have to be about the giving. And I know that's sort of the opposite of how we function as nonprofits, but sometimes we have to put that aside and think about the people. Um, other things we can think of uh, if we have information is folks who had a significant life event. They get married or they have a baby. Holidays are a great time to celebrate those kind of milestones that they've accomplished over this year. And then of course, the holidays. Like there's all these different holidays that happen between November and January, especially a couple of faith-based ones. So if you're a faith-based organization, you know, make sure that your, organ your prospects, like you're reaching out to them in the way that's appropriate for those things. Oop, there's a comment. 
great insight on reaching out to those who might value some extra attention this time of year. I hadn't thought about that before, but definitely going to inform strategy going forward. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of groups that don't get recognized as often. So this is a nice time to reach out to them, you know, especially the holidays, which tend to be, you know, for some folks, a sad time or a lonely time if they've lost family or if they're alone. So they remember those warm touches. So ooh, that sounded wrong. Um, no. They remember this friend. No, I'm just going to leave that alone. They remember when someone's reached out to them at a time where they felt lonely or sad, that would, they would remember us for that. Not that that's our ulterior motive, but like it is, it's a kind thing to do. So again, you may still want to contact your top 25, your VIPs, your highest rated prospects, but think a little bit more broadly and more inclusively with the donor-centric eye about who you really should be looking at because it's not just those groups. Ah, they remember being thought of. That's a much nicer way than my weird touchy thing I was saying. Thank you, Marianne. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, more food doesn't look good. All right. So as we start thinking about how to prioritize our outreach, think about what might be the best form of outreach. You want to be mindful of a couple of things, right? So your budget. Budget matters. We don't want to send some big glittery embossed cards because those are nice, but that might blow your budget. Um, everyone has slightly different budgets. I'm not assuming anything about your finances for your organization, but just, you know, when we invest in things that are bigger and more expensive, we blow through whatever we have set aside for our budget faster. So things like big dinners or receptions, those are very pricey. So if we are going to have a dinner or a reception, make sure we're inviting just the right people. And it's in an investment money well spent because there's a budget for that. And then if we're doing it now and we still have six more months of our fiscal year to go, make sure it's the right group. Um, other things to be mindful of, your staff, right? We've all, we've all been going through some ups and downs with staffing. Some of us better, some, some of us more up, some of us more down. Um, but make sure that if you're making a plan for all these types of outreach, stuffing envelopes, making phone calls, planning dinners, you have enough staff to pull it off. Right? You don't want to plan so much work that your staff is going to be exhausted. It's the holidays for them too. So they have other things going on. They have family plans. They may have children. They may have you know, religious organizations that they're affiliated with or other things that they do. They may be volunteers in their community. So don't exhaust your staff. It's not kind. And we can be mindful of them as well. Um, oh, someone's saying, and spread the word around. So it's not just one to two people doing all the extra work. Yep. <laughs> it's always those one or two in the office who are like they'll do it it's like mikey with life cereal give it to mikey he'll eat anything just because they'll do anything doesn't mean you should load it all onto them right it's not fair and it's not kind and this is the time of year where we should try to be more kind all times of year should be more kind but this is one where we think about it more just because you know santa and all that sort of stuff holidays and goodwill to men and whatnot um time is another consideration is there actually enough time to pull off whatever outreach and communication you want to have with your prospects in the next almost seven weeks? Because if you're starting planning now, can you pull it off within seven weeks or less, slightly less? Um, maybe you can, like if it's a big gala event, probably not. If you haven't started planning it and you're starting to plan it today, you're not gonna pull that off before the end of the calendar year, simply because there's a lot of moving parts most people's calendars are full up, right? But if it's something more like a mailing, probably pull it off, depending again on staffing and time and resources. But think through how much time do you have to execute what you want to do? And then another thing to consider is segmentation, which sounds weird. Um, but you might wanna do different types of outreach or communication or engagement with different groups of your prospects. So if they're local prospects, maybe you all just meet out at the local, like the cool hip, not that I do these things, but some people go to the cool hip places, right? To get something to snack on after work, have a couple of cocktails, you meet, you gather your network, it's a great thing, your prospects are happy, off you go. That's an easy thing to do. So maybe one segment does that of your prospect, but other prospects, they live hundreds of miles away, so that's not going to work for them. So what do you do for them? So, and you're going to need a plan for each of these segments if you're going to be segmenting people and doing something slightly different for different groups. So again, back to budget, time, and staff. 
if you're doing multiple things, make sure you have enough budget, enough time, and enough staffing to do that. And then if you want to do a holiday event, you can still pull those off at this time of year, even if you have to start planning them. Um, what is the focus of the event? Is it an actual part of the holiday? Are you celebrating Christmas, Thanksgiving, Hanukkah, any of those things? Um, are you just celebrating your organization's successes this past calendar year? Or are you creating a networking opportunity for your constituents and your prospects? Like what is the focus of the event? And make sure it has some kind of focus. Otherwise it feels just very like, well, we have some cocktails, some there's a cheese plate. I'm gonna invite some folks. Make it meaningful. Don't waste their time. Yes, they'll show up for free drinks and snacks, but like make it meaningful for them. So attach it somehow to either who they are or who you are. All right. So before launching headfirst into trying to engage with and manage your prospects for the holiday season, you have to have a plan. Always have a plan. Um, use your plan like a roadmap. It's going to help guide you on what you need to do, when you need to do it, and what tools and resources you're going to need to pull in in order to accomplish those things. Be realistic about your timeline for your plan. Because, you know, all the best laid plans go sideways when something just out of the blue happens. So be prepared and leave wiggle room in your plan so that you can adjust to those things. Don't have it so tight that one small thing going wrong blows the whole plan, right? I know we only have a little over seven weeks left in the calendar year, but you can still pull it off if you leave a little wiggle room. Um, during the season, know the actual holidays. And you want to know sort of the quote unquote real ones, as well as the more commercial ones or the cause based ones. Uh, for example, today, the 14th of November, this is World Diabetes Day, if you didn't know. I looked it up, I didn't know. Um, which is important to know if you're an organization that focuses on diabetes or health. That might be something that you would want to bring into play. Um, another example is November 20th is Revolution Day for Mexico. So if you have a lot of folks with Mexican heritage in your constituency, that might be something you want to recognize. And then you have all the other ones, you know, anything from Thanksgiving to Small Business Saturday, Hanukkah, Pearl Harbor Day, Winter Solstice, Kwanzaa Boxing Day, New Year's Eve, Christmas, all those other ones in between. Like there's tons of different things that we could celebrate. So pick the ones that matter to your organization and make them fun for yourself and for them. Um, and depending on your constituency, like your list, um, you might, you know, you know, you need to figure out what your list is of these holidays and observances that you want to do between now and the end of the calendar year. Because not all of us are going to celebrate Pearl Harbor Day, but if you have a lot of veterans or if you're a veteran based organization or a military based organization, you have a military focus, you want to, you want to make sure that you celebrate that one. But not every place will, just because Again, time, resources, staffing, we can't celebrate every single thing, but we'll celebrate the ones that are most meaningful and have some attachment to both us and our constituents and our prospects. All right. So tools that you can use to help stay organized and on task. The nice thing is we probably have all these tools at our disposal already. So we have a database, most of us, if not a full-blown one, sometimes you would just have it in Excel. That's maybe not ideal, but it's better than nothing. Um, some of us have created some dashboards and reports that we can use. We might have lists. We certainly have a calendar. Everyone has a calendar somewhere, whether it's a digital calendar or an actual paper one. Or... Does anyone still use the little books? What were those called? The day minder, day track or something? You know what I mean. I'm dating myself. Um, but there was some book with little, I don't know, you could add crap to it. And it came leather bound. It looked real fit. Day planner. Thank you. Someone, Marianne had that one. Yeah. <laughs> And then we want to use our list. So when, when we pull our list, we pull them hopefully into Excel, some of us Google Sheets. I'm not as familiar with that. But you want to be able to sort and filter and pivot that information so that you can find your segments, find your groups, find your widows, find your elders, find the people with the Mexican heritage if you have that coded in your database. Not everyone does. Um, find the folks who might be veterans for your Pearl Harbor Day celebration. You know, you want to be able to mine through your data. So you know who you want to involve in each of these touch points as you engage with them through, throughout the holiday season. And then as you think about who you want to read out to, what is the message? Are we simply asking for end of year calendar gift, just like everyone else? 
um, which is fine, but sometimes that becomes white noise when all they're getting is solicitation at the end of the year. Or are we being a little more donor centric? You know, what do they want to hear from us about our organization? You know, what what are the message that would be meaningful to them above and beyond? You can still make the ask. I'm not telling you not to, but couple it with something else. Um, some types of messaging you might want to include are things like the impact from the previous year's programming. You might want to thank them for their support that of the things that you were able to do with their gifts for this past year. Um, you might want to send them a list of your organization's upcoming events for the next calendar year. You know, some of us do throw events, things like art shows, galas, fun runs, plays, concerts, membership-based things are allowed to, if you're membership-based, you know, membership events that they come to. But maybe you have a calendar of events you could share with them so they can plan out their year, start coming to some of your events throughout. Um, depending on your organization, you might have a very specific holiday message for some of you if you're faith-based, certainly fairly easy to focus on some of the faith-based holidays. But you also might want to focus on what are the traditions for those holidays, the you know, traditions and observations of those faith-based holidays above and you know above and beyond simply Happy Hanukkah. You know, maybe you send them a recipe for some of the traditional dishes, things like that. So you, you could really incorporate something fun into it beyond above and beyond just Happy Hanukkah. Send us a gift. Like here's you know here's a great recipe, or here you know I'm just looking at all the food. It's all I can think of. Um, sharing with them something about the holiday that's that could be fun and meaningful for them as well um in some cases you might want to create a highly personalized message if you really know this prospect well if you just met with them um if it's someone who's really important within your organization maybe you've named a building or a scholarship after them you might want to really personalize that message to them if it's appropriate and then, you know again of course you can make your fundraising ask just be aware that if that's the only thing that you're reaching out to your constituent about, you know, it, it they see right through that. Your constituents, your prospects, they're very smart. So you want to make sure that it doesn't feel like it's all about you for the holiday when you're reaching out to your constituents' prospects because it, it becomes the white noise in the mix. Every other organization seems to send out that messaging. You want to be much more focused on who they are as people and who they are to your organization. So, um, Lou through the slides. So we can talk now and share some of your current or past challenges for dealing with your prospects and reaching out to your prospects and engaging with them at this calendar year end. So um, perhaps you're willing to share some of your past challenges that you've had, how you approached it, what worked or what didn't. We learn as much from what we fail at as what we succeed at, sometimes more. Um, and you can either share in the chat, you can come off, uh, what do you call it, off mute and share. You don't even have to go on camera. You can just be the voice behind like the Wizard of Oz. Remember him, the big voice? <laughs> <laughs> so Ruthie, one of the things that I'm thinking about while you're presenting, you keep saying, make it donor centric. Don't make them think that the only time you want to talk to them is when you need money. But this is juxtaposed, juxtaposed with urgent need for the nonprofit, right? So I'm busy, busy, busy. Oh, yes. I got to reach out to this person. And so there has to be a way to set up the infrastructure that the touches are automated, right? Or that the yeah. reminders for me to send out, you know, um, Ruthie has, you know, Ruthie's birthday is December 23rd. So she gets ripped off, just send her a note. Whether or not you're a major gift prospect, right? Or, and then if we start saying that, what kind of escalation of personal touches do we suddenly have, even for non-donors? You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot that goes into that. Yeah. And some of our systems, our databases, our CRMs can handle us scheduling in those kind of things, which is great. Um, sometimes we have to find a vendor tool that helps us do these sort of automations to remind us how to, you know, what kind of outreach we want to do. And other times we just go real old school, just pull out all your constituency, who has a birth date, you know, sort, filter, and then just kind of plug down the list. It is a little more tedious and definitely not mm -hmm. automated, but it is a way to do it for those of us who don't have access to the other two. But yeah, you do want to, if, especially if, if time and, and staffing is a consideration, if we can automate any portion of this kind of outreach, 
absolutely right. absolutely but if we don't have that luxury because some of us don't just go old school with the excel list no <laughs> it still works it just takes a little more time it's a little more tedious and it'll take a little more manpower or more I, manpower. yeah i actually use um excel to for uh mail merges using email so it's not just to copy, you know, I lose an afternoon saying hello. Mm -hmm. It's, I can just, you know, I know it's your birthday this month and I know it sucks. So love you. You know what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. Ugh. Anyone else out there working on, currently working on, or you've done this in years past, some kind of calendar year end challenge? that you've had maybe the messaging didn't work right maybe the scheduling was an absolute holy mess maybe you didn't have enough resources and so everyone went bananas like we can share the things that we we stunk at as much as the stuff that we succeeded at there's nothing wrong with that oh yeah marion saying feel me to feel free to unmute and share your story we are recording this so be mindful Ooh. of like don't check anyone under the bus please <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I was actually going to mention something piggybacking on from what, what you said earlier that about staffing. Um, so many times when I've worked at institutions, uh, someone will come up to us and say, oh, you know, let's do an end, end of year uh, push to get people to give online. And everyone says, oh, that's great. You know, we can, people can give online. You know, they're sitting there, you know, on New Year's Eve, and they realize at the last minute, oh, I meant to give the so and so this this calendar year for my taxes. What they sometimes forget is that if you know if you have someone who's not used to giving online, or you know they've been reveling and they've had a bit you know too much to revel about, um, they might forget to they might not want to actually give online, and they'll decide at the last minute to call and phone in their gift. And if they're gonna phone in their gift, you have to have someone there to receive the gift. Um, and I, I think some donors have this feeling that people are just sitting at the phone waiting for people to call to make a gift. Um, whether that's- On bank on a telethon, right? <laughs> yeah, even on New Year's Eve or, you know, or any, any time of year. So um, at one institution I worked for, we had someone uh, at the phone literally all day on New Year's Eve um, just in case somebody made a call and uh, I was there once and I did actually get a call for a $5,000 gift so um, so you know it it, it did <laughs> at least pay off that one time yeah. um, and uh, it, I mean obviously it wasn't the most fun uh, task to do to be sitting there all day um, you know, waiting to see if someone would call, but you know, it 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 did pay off in that instance. Yeah, yeah, I know some organizations will put out a notice email or something, or put it on their website, just saying our offices will be closed between this date and this date. And some of them will even include thing like, but if your gift is postmarked by December thirty first, we will count it in last year's tax for for the heck purposes. So they. If you're not available to have someone, you know, monitoring the phones up until midnight on the 31st, you could still offer them that perhaps that they could mail in a check. So old school, mail in a check. <laughs> and I should say that this happened some years ago before I think it became very common for people to buy or do things on the internet. Yeah. Um, I think as it gets more common, yes. Um, but having said that, I think there are still people who are in the habit of calling um, yeah. at some point between Christmas and New Year. Uh, it's just their habit to do so. So if you know that you have donors who do that, you know, you do need to make sure someone's around. Uh, or if you can't do that, try to get your phone number to uh, be transferred to wherever it is you are. Um and that, you know, just just make sure if, if a call comes in that you, you know, put on your professional attitude and, and, you know, answer the phone as you would if it were at work. Exactly. Exactly. So I worked one organization who shall remain nameless. Um, 
just because it's the kind thing to do, who um, got very overzealous at the end of the calendar year and were like, we have to get mailings out, we have to get mailings out. So someone went into the database and pulled a mailing list, as one does, to mail things out. Unfortunately, they forgot to exclude the deceased folks. So the mailing went out to all of the living constituency, as well as all of the deceased, and some were very recently deceased. Some have been deceased for quite some time, but it went out to everybody. And there were definitely a few oh, very irate phone calls and or messages that came in after that. But the nice thing was there were some folks, like it, it, it sort of worked out well in, in some ways as, you know, because there were some folks who called and said, oh, oh, I guess you hadn't heard so-and-so passed away five years ago. And then they had a conversation about it. You know, and and maybe they even made, I think one person made a memorial gift for the person who had passed, like several years past. So in some ways it was awful. And in some ways it actually brought some other things to light. So I wouldn't recommend mailing to your deceased people. Let's no, just be clear about that. that. I wouldn't do that on purpose. <laughs> no, no, I, I'm not recommending that. But I'm just saying like sometimes your mistakes still, there is a silver lining to them. So even when we, you know, in our rush to get that mailing out really screwed up and we we sent it out to deceased folks, we still, you know, it, it still brought in some phone calls and or letters that were great conversations or great correspondence. This was back before the days of like emails really were big. And um it, and, and and so there was actually some good engagement through it, strangely enough. But again, I would not recommend mailing to your deceased. But we have something in the comments. Um Robin saying, when I was in the public higher ed as a director of advancement services, our line was forwarded to my cell so I could accept gifts by phone. So on call during the holidays, it rarely rang. People mailed in or made their gifts online. I'm glad it didn't ring that much, but it's nice they made their gifts. So yeah, so that works out really well. Others. Other challenges folks are having as they're screeching towards the end of the calendar year. Um, are we finding that because folks are taking holidays off, we don't have enough staff to pull off some of our things? That could be. And I think that's always a very common thing. With I, I think you know one thing related to that is when people are considering like staff coverage, uh, don't just assume that the single person with no family is the person who's going to cover everything <laughs> you know, because the, it seems like everywhere I've worked it's like oh who doesn't have a spouse or children or anybody else it's like okay you are automatically covering every holiday so I think we need to be mindful that everybody wants to enjoy their holiday time you know even when we're staffing challenged at the holidays with you know coverage so. yeah I remember when one organization I worked at the gift processors always worked and it's a hard thing for someone else to fill in but like there was one gift processor at this one and that person always worked straight through the holidays and they got comp time later but you know they had kids so it, it wasn't quite as fair so like there needed to be some other did they really need to work every day did we really need to bring in the gifts every day could they take an extra day off maybe so you gotta you gotta think of the folks who are working at the at those more day-to-day -day grind type roles where like they there needs to be someone bringing you know getting the mail checking for the checks processing the gifts but does it have to have have to happen on a daily basis it, maybe not what what we've done the last few years where i'm at is uh, especially because the mail room is not open every day during the holidays we pretty much shut down between about two days before christmas and the day after new year's uh, campus offices are shut down but we do have our someone to come in and you know just check and see you know but it's like twice twice between Christmas and New Year's like maybe a couple days after Christmas and then New Year's Eve yeah. uh, just just to see and so that that's a whole lot better than you know when I first got there and yeah our gift processors would be there every day yeah and it's a lot to ask them to do that when, you know, they see everyone else just like closing up shop and heading home for a week, to, you know, to be the one person who has to kind of drag your butt into work. And yeah, you can wear jeans, but <laughs> sometimes that's not enough reward to be coming into work every day and doing the work when everyone else is gone. Yeah. Yeah. I think one, one organization I worked with, um, 
they would check the mail, I think a couple, uh, once, two, maybe three times, but they didn't process the gifts unless it was over a certain dollar threshold. So they would check the mail, they would you know, store everything in a safe and then on with their merry day. So it took maybe, and the person lived right near the, the organization. So they just popped in, checked it off on their day. But if, if there was something over a certain dollar threshold, they would process it just because they wanted to get that in. So that could happen. Oh. What else, folks? Now you're all out there eating food, eating delicious food. <laughs> what other kind of challenges are we finding at the holiday time as far as managing our prospects, whether it be dealing with the gift coming in or just figuring out how to tackle events or outreach or just making sure that we are bringing in the gifts on time so that we're closing our gifts, that we're sort of teeing up the next group of gifts that we're going to be asking for in January, in February. What are our challenges there? Because holidays can be a crazy time. Something I wanted to ask the group about. Um, at my organization, we are in a healthcare nonprofit, Planned Parenthood Los Angeles. And at the end of year, after we do our mailing, uh, you know, the mass mailing out to our mid-level donors, we try to do a call campaign to follow up on that mailing and close those end of year gifts. And something we struggle with is because it's end of year and staffing and time, there's only so many calls that can realistically be made uh, to follow yeah. up on, you know, however many huge number of mailers that went out. So trying to figure out how to prioritize those, like who should be getting those calls. I think historically it's been the higher dollar donors, but I'm not sure that that's necessarily the right move. I would hearken back to that list we were talking about earlier, like maybe these are the folks who typically give at the calendar year end that you make the calls to because they're more apt to be like, oh, oh yeah, I meant to get that in. Let me just take care of that now. Um, or people who tend to be, and this is going to sound mean at first, but like lonely because they're more apt to take the phone call, right? So yeah. it, 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 it's a dual purpose thing. You're, you're checking in on your gift and you're checking in on them as a person. You know, how are you doing at the holidays? How are things going? You can talk with them, reminisce a little, like, because you have some time probably. So you can reminisce a little about like, you know, holidays from years past or what was their favorite, you know, what's their favorite holiday tradition or, you know, are they gathering with anyone? Sometimes just getting that outreach, especially for folks who are elders or we know they may be alone for various reasons. It, it, it's really helpful because the holidays can be a hard time for, for certain people. So being mindful of who we're reaching out to to make sure we're also checking in on them as a person, not just as a donor, can be, can be good. So organizing some of them that way could be helpful. Um, and then just reaching out to the folks who maybe you know don't celebrate these holidays. Like some people don't celebrate Hanukkah or Christmas or whatever the holiday that you're calling closest to. So if you know they're not celebrating that particular holiday or you're pretty darn sure we can't always, sometimes we're making assumptions, right? Um, but if we're, we're pretty darn sure they're not celebrating the holiday because we've heard something from them or someone's told us some things and we're pretty darn sure that's true, those might be a good group to reach out to because they're not as busy. So if we know that they don't celebrate Christmas because they're not Christian or Christmas just isn't their thing, calling them right near Christmas is going to be okay because they're probably not as busy as someone who's Christmas is the big holiday. We do the big thing. The whole family comes over. We cook for 80 people, whatever it may be. So, and I know it's not always easy to figure out how to like, how do I sort and filter for that in my, my spreadsheet? <laughs> but over time, we can find ways to code certain things in our database. So we might just code them as somewhere saying something like, this is a person to <laughs> Mariana Analytics. Yes. Um, but we can also add coding into our database saying, contact this person at Christmas time, contact this person at Hanukkah, contact this person, or don't contact this person at this time. Or make sure to reach out to this person on Pearl Harbor Day because their grandfather was there. Those kinds of things. Like if we know stuff, we can start coding little pieces in there to help you know trigger things for us. So, thank you. You're welcome. What else? Does anyone else have another tactic that might be helping Mackenzie with that? 
Those are just my tactics. Mine are not always the best. We're a shy group today. Do any of us have challenges with resources? I think everyone here could probably say yes, um, just because we're nonprofits. But mm -hmm. are resources the thing that make how we reach out to our prospects and how we prioritize how we do that? Is, are those the things that are, are stumbling blocks? Do we not have the tools that we need? Do we not have the like there are vendor solutions that we just we don't we don't have a budget for, or our database just simply doesn't do that or it doesn't store this, or we when we pull the data out, it has to funnel through one person and they're so bottlenecked this time of year. Are, are any of us running into those issues? If you're nodding heads, I can't tell. <laughs> we are running into a little bit of that right now. Um, oh. Our database person is on medical leave right now, our database administrator. Um, fortunately, uh, somebody else on our staff, uh, that would be me uh held that position previously and so you know we're pinch hitting and there are a couple uh data and record specialists that are helping out um one full-time and two part-time but yeah it's it's definitely a difficult time of year for that to be happening and then again it gets into the resources and the staffing go together yeah so yeah that's as you're doing the job for the person who's out on leave who's doing your work, right? <laughs> exactly. Probably, probably still you. So then finding the time for you to manage that, it gets, yeah, we start to work into a land of chaos. <laughs> yeah, we, I think we're doing a little less year-end stuff this year than we usually do for precisely that reason, because we just don't have the bandwidth uh, to do a lot of it at this point. <laughs> the things that you are doing at the year end are you being a little bit more tactical about what you're choosing to do versus not do or was it just well this is a thing because so and so who's on leave they took care of that and of us know how to do it so we're just going to scrap it this this time mm -hmm. around it's it's more of we're doing more of the things that we've always the ones that have always been the top priority like you know the big year end direct mail the holiday card for the president's office um but you know there are always some that it's like oh yeah this would be a good idea to do um those are the ones that are kind of falling by the wayside right now and um we also have had an event that we are having to postpone just because we just don't have the bandwidth um to do all the scheduling and the lists and all of that. Plus, we don't have the personnel to work it during the holidays. It's scheduling an event during the holidays is not always a good move as far as staff coverage, too. <laughs> and that's true. Oh, all right. There's a question in the chat. Any suggestions for obituary alerts? Legacy.com and Google Alerts are OK, but does anyone use another resource where a higher ed institution with several name changes and mergers, so it gets tricky. Oh, so like you were called like Smith College, and then you were called Smith University, and then you're in like Johnson and Smith University, like that kind of name change is what I'm assuming you're talking as you've merged. I shouldn't have started with Smith College. That's a real thing. Um, that's my alma mater, but um, first thing came to mind. But so I'm assuming that's what you mean by merges. <sighs> Does anyone else have anything else besides legacy.com and Google Alerts that they're using for obituaries? Maybe there's some new and upcoming fun thing that folks know about or have heard of. So does that mean we're bored with the topic of feasting on end of year appreciation? Or just Rebecca really needs the solution. Well, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have you all well, captive. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're trying to find those those widowed people <laughs> that oh, we are reaching Rebecca's out. Like, yes, yes, Rebecca's like, they don't want me to make a mistake. <laughs> it helps with the end of year appreciation, she's saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is the thing. You have to pay to have an obituary put in, right? And so um, most of us can afford that at some, you know, some way or another. Um, 
Oh, right. The Remember Our Alumni thing is at this time of year. Remember people. Yeah, Newsbank. Kevin, Kevin's already mentioning this because like, Newsbank has local newspapers. Mm. It's less expensive. It was less expensive for me to put my father's obituary into a local paper than um, into the statewide paper. Yeah. So I agree with Kevin. And she's saying we had a paid service in higher ed and we entered about seven different variations of our name. I want to say we had Newsbank at what time, but don't recall the other services paid that we used. Yeah. And, and it's hard when you've had name changes and you have to add multiple variations of them. I worked at a university at one point, not where I am now, but um, I think they had seven or eight different versions of their name that living alumni would have recognized I forget if it was seven or eight but it was right in that range so similar to you and um we were only using um legacy.com and news and google and i think we had we had one of the vendor solutions we had an iwave or donor search but they had a an obituary thing within there that we used as well but we had to enter the searches every which way to Sunday because we had seven different or so different varieties of what the name could be. And then there's always the way people shorten names. So um, my sister went to Rhode Island School of Design, but everyone just calls it RISD because it's way shorter. So you have to enter all the different variations of the variation. <laughs> Makes it complex. So I feel your pain, Rebecca, as far as that goes. Alumni at different call different times call the campus by different names. Some were pet names like Turkey Tech. Oh, that's cute. As the campus site had originally been a turkey farm in the early 60s. <laughs> Very time appropriate for the season. Um, we also share the same acronym with another campus in the same system. That makes it confusing. Ooh. Yeah. Turkey Tech. I like that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I think you just have to use the resources if you have, if you're available to get news bank, I don't know what the cost is on something like that, but um, that might be a, a viable resource to get into. Oh, someone's saying they also get them off of talkwalker.com, not searching just as they send them. All right. So there's an option. I don't know how many variations of your name you're allowed to s submit on there, but I'm sure you can go on the talkwalker.com website and find these things out, of course. Robert is saying she uses three variations of their school, of their organization name. Yeah. I bet none are as cool as Turkey Tech, though. Oh. Oh. Thanks, Wayne. All right, so any other thoughts about your current or past challenges as far as engaging with and managing your prospects at this crazy time of year, calendar year end with about 500 holidays between now and January 1st? We think we have some ideas and we're gonna sit back at our desks and hope they work. All right. So we do have another water cooler chat coming up next month. Again, one more thing to add to your fun and exciting, and someone's put it in the chat as well, um, about hibernating while you work, methods to stay on task with your prospect management. So that one's going to be fun, I think, as well. So if you have time on that Tuesday to meet with us at 12 o'clock Eastern time, certainly join up, join the fun. 